We cut our way through the summer haze to giant country. Marion opens with Huntington North. The visiting Vikings go up top. Jim Hall to Chuck Shoemaker, wide open down to the seventh. Andrew Steven knocks down the door for the early lead, 7-0, but that's all she wrote as Marion takes over for a 28-7 win. Next stop, through the air a few minutes to Eastern High School. The Comets hosting Clinton Prairie. Slow start for the Comets. The Gophers send Charles Hogg on the blitz, and he sacks the Eastern quarterback. Clinton Prairie turning in the highlights tonight. Jake Tharp with the interception to stop the Comets' drive. But Eastern dominates the rest of the night, starting with a fumble recovery. Comets win 32-19. Our final stop with Skylights tonight is Kokomo. The Wildcats take it on the Ben Davis Giants. Turn this bad boy up. We're going to go check out some highlights. Welcome to Cat Country, baby! <laughs> The Cat fans trying to rally their squad down 21-7 at the half. Jerron Pig with a fourth down snag to keep the drive alive. Pig's feeling pretty good about it, but the Giants shut the door in a hurry. Wendell Mosteller goes up top. The Cat secondary sleeping. Sonny Marlowe with a 63-yard touchdown. 41-7, the Giants rock Kokomo, and Chopper 13 is headed home. We'll see you next week with more Skylights. For Operation Football, I'm Dave Calabro. Should I take some back to that? Yeah. Okay, we'll take one back to that. We knew we were in for some fun once we landed in Martinsville. The Artesians, definitely a crazy bunch. And once we cleared all the crazy string off the lens, it was football time. Sophomore sensation Earl Hannaford looking for the TD on the opening drive, but Perry Meridian, Scott Horton steps in front right at the goal line and picks it off, takes it back to the 18. But the Falcons also in a giving mood. They turned it over twice in the first quarter, including the interception, Chad White with the snag. Martinsville celebrates a 33-6 trouncing and thanks for the warm Operation Football welcome tonight. The aerial assault continues with Chopper 13. Our next stop is Center Grove, the 5A powerhouse playing host to Lawrenceburg, a team with only 24 members. I think they see Chopper 13. Let's make a landing and find out what's happening in the ballgame. <laughs> The Trojans with a 14-0 lead at the half with thoughts of racking up more. Center Grove's Andy Williamson with a defensive play. Big time sack on Brian Atkinson. The Trojans have their way all night long. Brock Poole with a 20-yard sprint nearly runs over a teammate as Center Grove rolls to a big win. Back in the air we go and we circle around to Greenwood. After a quick landing, we're down in the trenches, down and dirty. The fans definitely into this one, and why not? The Woodman up 21-0 in the fourth. Greenwood with one final blow to their rivals from Beach Grove. Trent Smith with the play, 57 yards. He's gone, 27-0. Greenwood rolls to the big victory. The Woodman chop up the Hornets. With this Operation Football Skylight Report, I'm Dave Calabro. Take a look at this. We're talking about a perfect night for 13 skylights. And we start with a rivalry that dates back to the 50s. Oh my, the Bulldogs are juiced as they get ready to take on the defending state champs from Sheridan. The Blackhawks using their speed early on. Jeff Dunn off the option. He scoots 50 yards before being pulled down. The Bulldogs doing a fine job keeping those Sheridan boys out of the end zone in the first quarter. Clinton Central moving the chains, but trouble. Brian Dunn can't pull this one in just off the fingertips. Sheridan's Jeff Dunn with the INT. Our next stop, Cross County to Elwood as they face their longtime rivals from Tipton. Polly the Panther is jamming, but the visiting Blue Devils up 21-7 at the half. Elwood forced to go to their passing attack. Tarek Wilson, he's open, but 
a little bit out of reach. Tipped and fires for over 200 yards in the air. Donnie Wolf wide open, a 17 yard strike, 42-15. Tipton tattoos Elwood. Our final stop tonight is Frankton, where Rebuff makes a visit. It's a short trip, only six miles from Elwood, and when you're traveling 110 miles an hour, well, it doesn't take long to get there. You want to talk about wacky fans, the Frankton faithful in living color tonight. The buff down 7-6. They need this field goal to take the lead in the third. Bad snap ends up to be a big sack for Frankton. This one is a defensive dandy. Rebuff with another shot at getting the lead in the fourth. But Clay Walters chased down by Ryan McDuffie. Final play of the game. The Eagle defense seals it up with a big time safety. 9-6 the final as Frankton rolls to 3-0. That's reason to celebrate. Ladies, take it away. With this week's Skylight Report, Dave Calabro from the Great North for Operation Football. We head to the Great Northeast, Delaware County, and Delta Eagle Country. Okay, we're ready for some football. Second play of the night. Delta's Ty Steppens with a pick. He takes it back to the 21 before Jay County gives him the old country crunch. Late in the first, the visiting Patriots figure out the right pass pattern. Luke Mitchell with big yardage for the first down. Hand off to Lee Wrights, and 11 yards later, touchdown. Jay County wins this one 27-21. From Eagle Country, we bird our way to the land of the Irish, the Anderson Highland Scots. The bagpipes are in tune, but Pendleton Heights up 15-0 at the half. Highland's Tommy Johns tries to generate some action with the interception, but Big David Jenkins, oh, makes him pay. Heights cruises to a 21-8 win. Jason Kimball is wide open with some fancy footwork with a 50-yard score. Our final stop tonight with Skylights is Anderson High School. The Indians are ranked eighth in the state. They're a strong ball club this year. They're taking on Lafayette Jeff. Well, here, take a look for yourself. I can't quite make out the scoreboard. It looks like somebody's getting blown out. Let's go find out. Boy, the Indians and their fans were definitely ready for Operation Football. What a show tonight. Huge night for junior C.J. Nunn. He racks up four, that's right, four touchdowns. And you want to see some defense. How about Marcus Cooley delivering the goods? Lafayette Jeff's Ryan Cole is going to feel that one for a few days. And how about John Turner? What a night for him. He touches the ball twice and scores twice. 41-12. Anderson off to a 4-0 start, and that goes well with those Indian fans. With tonight's Skylights, Dave Calabro, Operation Football. Channel 13 is Indiana's first. The Franklin Grizzly Cubs rolling out the bear rug for the Operation Football crew tonight. Greenwood on fourth and goal. The Woodmen punch it in to break a 14-0 tie. The Cubs trying to make a second quarter comeback, but Greenwood reading all those big plays. Buddy Bullock with the big sack attack. Franklin down 21-14 at halftime, but we have a cure for the Grizzly Cub Blues. Ladies, go ahead, fire them up there. Let's get these fans into this ball game. Kyle Jarman has a field goal block. Buddy hit the game winner. 24-21, Franklin comes back. Next stop to the south, the Columbus North Bulldogs doing the wave. They faced Perry Meridian tonight. Not much happening on the field in the first half, but the band sounded awfully good and they were dressed to kill. Perry wins it 13-3. And the final stop this evening, we head to Mooresville where the firefighters will do anything for a win these days, including going up top. Pioneers trying to avoid the 0-8 regular season. Beach Grove with the halfback pass. Steve Neely with the juggling act, and he pulls it in just in time at the four-yard line. 
The Hornets seal the deal. Neely with the end zone snag, 27 yards, 19 to two, Beach Grove wins it. Well, we tried, we thought we could bring Mooresville a little luck, but some nights it just doesn't work. With the skylight, Dave Calabro, News Channel 13 Sports. West Lafayette's unbeaten Red Devils are still 2A's best. Although North Newton Spartans proved to be an ample test tonight at Leslie Field. Go deep! Go deep! Go deep. Go deep. That's Mike Hinch on the first quarter reverse for the Spartans deep into west side territory. But the Devils' Chike O'Keefer is a Division I college talent and impressed the scouts at tonight's game with this hit. Then he recovered the fumbled snap to keep the game scoreless. And early in the second quarter, O'Keefer started the scoring with this touchdown run from midfield. West Lafayette built a 19-0 lead and held on to beat the Spartans 25-14. They next host Fort Wayne Lures in the semi-state. Now we fly east to Tipton to see if 3A's Blue Devils can stay unbeaten against Fort Wayne Dwanger. The Saints held a 12-point lead when Greg Harp came up with the big pick for Tipton. Then Harp hit Matt Miller for a first and goal. But the Saints took it to fourth and goal, and Harp's pass for the touchdown was too wide. That play pretty typical of a night of missed opportunities for the Blue Devils. They had another pass intercepted in the end zone that would have given them a touchdown and had a fumble return for a Dwenger touchdown. 14 points on those two turnovers, the difference in this one. The Saints won it 24 to 12, ending Tipton's unbeaten season at 11 and one. And on our way back to Indianapolis, a flyby of Westfield shows the Rocks accepting their regional trophy after beating Eastbrook 19 to nine. With the skylights, I'm Paul Stouter for Operation Football. Washington Continentals after their first trip to the state title game since 1983, but tonight they had to face the top team in 4A, the East Central Trojans. Let's go, Let's go. Not much offense in the first half. Both teams failed to score. No score at halftime. Yeah, 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 yeah. Football we played all year round. Yeah. It's time to go to work. Third quarter, the Continentals turn it up a notch. They march down to the 15-yard line. On fourth down, four to go, Quentin Davis stuffed by the Trojan defense. East Central's offense then goes on an 89-yard drive, eating 10 minutes off the clock. And on fourth and goal, Brian Hart goes off tackle for the score. Seven nothing Trojans. Washington fails to move the ball in their final possession. East Central eats up the rest of the time remaining on the clock for the big semi-state win. I'm glad uh, the kids played hard and we had that one call back in the first half. So, you know, they're a good football team. That's why they were number one all year. Washington wraps up the season 11 and two after a heartbreaking loss to East Central. From St. Leon, Dave Calabro, Operation Football. <laughs> 